Entergy provides much more than power. We support science and engineering at local schools to build a brighter path to better jobs and help prepare the next generation. Because together, we power life. Entergy. Additional support provided by the Fred B. and Ruth B. Ziegler Foundation and the Ziegler Art Museum located in Jennings City Hall. The museum focuses on emerging Louisiana artists and is an historical and cultural center for Southwest Louisiana. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting with support from viewers like you. I was shot four times. A man turns his life around after his violent past nearly right killed him. His shot. message, overlook your enemy. In the past, we could only treat F3s, F4s, so that's very severe liver damage. But a new drug treatment is giving hope to those with hepatitis C that didn't have hope before. If there is an algal bloom is persisting and they are visibly seen, I recommend a avoiding physical contact. Dangerous out of control algae shutting down beaches and putting our rich seafood industry at risk. Hi everyone, I'm Natasha Williams. And I'm Andre Morrow. Much more on those top stories in a moment on this week's edition of SWI. But first, a look at other headlines making news across our state. Louisiana could soon pass up California as the state with the second most detained immigrants. The growing number are housed in the state's detention centers. Texas is first with the most. Senator John Kennedy addressed the Baton Rouge Press Club this week and gave his take on the expanding border crisis. He hopes some help will come with the $4.5 billion aid package signed this week by President Trump. I think that uh, we ought to enforce our laws, and Trump's only sin is that uh, he's doing what a bipartisan group of politicians in Washington, D.C. have always refused to do. He's enforcing the law. A pair of voting rights groups used buses to travel the state this week. Their goal, to register convicted felons, felons who have their voting rights restored this year. Voice of the Experienced, or Vote, and Black Voters Matter kicked off events Sunday in Baton Rouge, then Monday went to Lafayette, Opelousas, and Alexandria. They covered Shreveport and Monroe on Tuesday and wound up Wednesday in New Orleans. Legislators voted last year to allow people on probation or parole for a felony to register to vote if they had not been behind bars for at least the past five years. A look at campaign fundraising for the three men running for governor now. Congressman Ralph Abraham, one of two Republicans in the race, was way behind Republican Eddie Rispone and Democrat John Bell Edwards as of April when the last campaign finance reports were filed. But Abraham has since gained a pair of GOP fundraising heavyweights, shipbuilder Boise Bollinger and New Orleans real estate developer Joe Canazero. The April numbers showed Abraham with a million dollars and Rispone with the most, ten and a half million, most of it his own money. The governor had $10.2 million. Those numbers will be updated this month. More than 11,000 people were kicked out of the state's Medicaid program when June ended because they didn't prove they qualified for the government health insurance coverage. It's the second round of people booted from Medicaid under quarterly wage checks that started this year. About 17,000 Medicaid enrollees received notices in May, flagged by a computer check that determined they made too much to qualify for the program. The state legislature rejected a proposal to raise the smoking age from 18 to 21 this past session, but a bipartisan move afoot in Washington could see Congress raise it. GOP Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and Democrat Senator Tim Kaine are pushing for the change and their efforts are gaining some traction. We'll see. State wildlife leaders want to see more marsh-killing nutria taken out, so they've upped the bounty price from five to six bucks for hunters who catch the rodents. Nutrias do a number on marsh ecosystems. Their nibbling and gnawing of tree roots cause erosion. This trapping effort to protect fragile wetlands has dropped off a bit with the number of nutria caught down from previous years. We'll see if the dollar more will make a difference.
Signs like that are causing chaos for some travel plans this holiday weekend, with dozens of beaches closing along with waterways and at least one state park. The expanding toxic algae bloom is the reason, and health officials warn, stay out of the water where it is. Now that's along much of Mississippi's Gulf Coast, some of Louisiana's, and in Big Lake Pontchartrain. And that seafood we love, if the catch is from an area where this algae is, well, I wouldn't eat it. To understand better why this is happening, and to this degree, the Gulf South's lead expert on toxic algae agreed to explain it to us and on her vacation, no less. She's a research professor at LSU's College of the Coast and Environment. Dr. Sabelle Bargu attest thank you so much for being here to help explain why this is happening in our waterways and why it uh, could kind of cause havoc with some vacation plans. So these are part of the system. So they are not coming from nowhere. They are part of the local community. And these are group of algae and each system is different algal, algal groups that occur, and looking for elements that it's need for them to grow. And the typical ones is the nutrients, and when they receive nutrients, they increase in their abundance, but not only nutrients, each group requires a set of optimum conditions, like temperature, some like warm and some like cold, or water needs to be turbulent or not turbulent. So depending on what set of environmental conditions exist at the time, then one group takes over the system and increase in their abundance. And that's a natural and global phenomenon. It, it happens everywhere. And it's a seasonal phenomenon. It usually happens in the springtime when the nutrients comes into these coastal waters. And, but excess of nutrient entry and the other optimum conditions when they get together they persist and grow continuously. So what's happening right now and is we an call example, them bloom. Yeah, is an example right. of it out of control. It's a, yeah, it's kind of an out of control. And they will eventually will slow da down and or die off because the elements that they need will get limited. But until then they will just keep growing. And when they are excessive amounts, then they can cause harmful effects. And that's what that's we're why we call it harmful algal blooms. Yes, and that's what we're seeing right now with some beach advisories, some beaches right. closed, water closed. Because they have an excess of growth, and they, the wind is pushing them to the beach area, so they are concentrated in certain areas in the lake, in the case of Lake Pontchartrain and the Mississippi coast, so it's visible, you can see them, they are aggregated in certain parts because they are so tiny microscopic organisms, so the wind keeps pushing them all over the place. So it's a combination of different things to explain the fate of the algal bloom, where it's going to stay, and how spread it's going to be. The Mississippi is getting because the spillway is still running and is pushing from Lake Pontchartrain to Lake Bourne to Mississippi Sound. The Mississippi River has lots of nutrients, and they, when they come into the lake, and Mississippi Spillway is one, a good source of nutrients in the lake. There's a nor northern tributaries also brings nutrients as well. So the combination of those different nutrient sources fueling algae growth. And right now, if I'm not mistaken, the bloom is persistent in the northern part of the lake. And because spillway is still running, and probably that part of the lake is not as fast flowing as opposed to the other side of the lakes. So when the water stays calmer, these are the times algae has an opportunity to pick up the nutrients and increase in their abundance. People just need to pay attention to following what's being recommended, either don't get in the water Absolutely. or carefully get in the water. If there is an algal bloom is persisting and they are visibly seen, I recommend a, avoiding physical contact, and not just for humans, but also for domestic animals. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't drink, obviously, the water, and I wouldn't recommend swimming in it, no, obviously, right. not putting their hands in plane. So just the physical avoidance is the best thing to do at the, at the moment. So how long does it last? When does it right. even go away? That all depends on these wonderful environmental conditions coming together. So when the spillway is closed, then it's going to determine what algae will take over which part of the coast. 
but until the nutrients are depleted. When nutrients are depleted, then there is no more nutrients, then algae is not going to be happy anymore. So we'll wait and see. Thank you so yes, much. Yes, of course, pleasure. For to us. Yes, thank you. And health and environmental agencies from the states impacted have the latest information on their websites. It's a good idea to go check those out. And you see those right there for Louisiana and also for Mississippi. Baton Rouge Mayor Sharon Weston Broom, the city's police chief and sheriff, held a community meeting Tuesday night to discuss a huge spike in gun violence that injured more than a dozen people in five different shootings over the past four days. The meeting drew a standing room only crowd with some expressing their frustration and fears out loud. As I go to the site of the shootings in South Baton Rouge, South 18th, South 19th Street, I can't believe what I'm hearing on TV. I'm becoming desensitized. I go to a funeral of a black child. The church is full of black children who know the routine of a funeral better than most elderly people do. It's all seen. The problem is from the home. What I tell people all the time is look at the numbers. Look at the data. Undoubtedly, recently, we had what is described as an anomaly. The recent challenges and shootings that we have had are not the norm for our city or for our parish over the past three years. But that does not mean that we are not concerned about what happened over the past week. Certainly, we have challenges, but this is not Gotham City. Make sure about that. Mayor Broom, the police chief, and the sheriff all agree the recent shootings are not indicative of a spike in the violent crime or a part of a long-term trend. They say despite what happened this past weekend, over a dozen shootings, crime is still down in the capital city. Now to the story of a man using his past to speak out against gun violence. Shot four times, Reggie Morgan shouldn't even be here to tell his story, but he believes he survived to help others. His message, overlook your enemy. He hopes to change the street code that has many using guns to settle a score and ruining the lives of generations of families across Louisiana. The violent deadly headlines are much the same statewide from Shreveport to Baton Rouge and cities and parishes in between. Gun violence claiming lives day after day, night after night, with no apparent end in sight. They are stories 41-year-old Reggie Morgan knows all too well, his lengthy rap sheet dating back to when he was just 17 years old. This area right here was a drug infested. He took us to the very street where a street fight left him with three gunshot wounds, fighting for his life. Young, trying to, you know, didn't have opportunity. Try to get a job, try to cut grass, couldn't make money, so turned to drugs. Years later, revisiting a dark and dangerous memory of his not so distant past. I was actually shot right here. When the first bullet hit me here, I ran back here behind this house. I ran behind this house and that's when I fainted. And I was out with bullet holes in my neck and my back and my legs. But Morgan says a miracle happened that night. A passerby was his angel. If it wasn't for the doctor, you know, because like I said, the police, when they came, they had taped everything off mm -hmm. and they wasn't worried about me. They was more so, cause, you know, getting the scene right, I guess, to mm -hmm. do the investigation. Mm -hmm. So, grace of God, the doctor came and saved my life. His life now stable, a business owner, Christian, an anti-gun violence advocate who hopes his message, Overlook Your Enemy, will become a national call to action. Music played a major, major role in my life through history. Mm -hmm. It always have, and it, it always will be. Morgan hopes to promote peace through music and his gospel record label, TBT. He says the only way to reach those shooting and killing is through the songs they follow, like the verses of the Bible. We could go back to, I could remember when they used to have songs, um, I got the heat in the trunk, mm -hmm. you know, Pop the trunk, get the gun. Everybody had their guns in the trunk. Mm -hmm. And then Soldier Slim, rest in peace, Soldier Slim, he came out, uh-uh, I got that needle on me. Mm -hmm. I got that needle on me. So people started taking the guns out the trunk, 
-hmm. do music, and mm -hmm. start putting them on them, mm -hmm. right? We can also see when people used to do drive-bys, we do drive-bys, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. They started doing drive-bys. Then they stopped saying, we don't do drive-bys no more, we do walk-ups. Mm -hmm. So they stopped doing drive-bys and start doing walk-up, walking up on people, shooting them. Mm -hmm. So the music is the power, the music is the influence, the music is our culture. Mm -hmm. And whatever the song say, we do it. But he stopped short of blaming the rappers whose songs seem to promote violence. He says it goes much deeper. So are these rappers that are saying these things, even though it is the way people are living, are they to blame for the continual violence and the gun violence that's out here? I can't say the rappers because they're only doing what they think they can do to make it out. Mm -hmm. Honestly, to answer that question, I think it's the labels, mm -hmm. it's the radio stations, it's the people that's paying the rappers to rap about that. Mm -hmm. Because there's a million positive rappers out here, mm -hmm. but they never be heard. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the the upper labels, they don't want to promote that. So what it does is it makes us think that that's all people want to hear. Mm -hmm. No, that's all being promoted. Morgan says he didn't come by his change of heart easily. He was just released from prison a year and a half ago after pulling a five-year bid for attempted murder. So in the transition of me going to prison, he used prison to snatch me away so that he could get my attention. He says it was a sermon he heard in prison that changed his life forever. He was preaching about Joseph. Mm -hmm. And he said Joseph had to go to prison because God was about to use him to take care of the land. It was going to be a phantom. Mm -hmm. And God was going to use Joseph. Mm -hmm. And it's like when he said that, it's like he was talking directly to me. Morgan says he studied the Bible and knew immediately his mission the moment he was released. Man. God gonna use me. I had to come to prison to take care of my family. Is in agreement with me, and hell, you have to obey me. Amen. Back, back. Throughout the city, through song and mentoring, Morgan hopes to reach those who need to hear it the most. I'm excited to bring this good news to you all. The thug that went to heaven based on a true story. Telling all who will listen, learn from his mistakes, overlook your enemy, put your guns down, and use the phrase, I'm gonna let you slide, and live to see a bright future. Bag bag, tell the devil bag bag. Obedient to God, now I got my swag bag. Bag bag, bag bag, tell the devil bag bag. Resisting many flee, the greater one living me. Yeah, you see me doing my thing around the world, they say they like it. Demon spirits mad watching Christians get excited. Now Morgan remains active in the community for information on his upcoming events. Head to his Facebook page. Don't miss his back to school rally later this summer. There'll be lots of giveaways and 50 free haircuts just in time for school. It's not often that Louisiana is on the groundbreaking end of a big business model. But we are, and this one's in medicine, and it could pay huge dividends for years. And that doesn't even include all the lives saved. The old way of treating patients with pricey hepatitis C meds was frustrating and cruel. When a new way was announced a week ago, the world suddenly seemed like a better place. Are you doing what you always wanted to do? Uh, pretty much, yes. I've been a nurse for 30 years. I've been a nurse practitioner for 19 years. Joni Nickens specializes in infectious diseases at Open Healthcare Clinic of Baton Rouge. She says it's life saving what the state is doing, moving forward with a new way to pay for the expensive treatment of hepatitis C. She says the decision could dramatically increase the number of people who can be cured of the liver damaging disease and provide a model for others struggling to afford the medications. Hep C kills more people in America than HIV. The hepatitis C virus causes it. It is a blood-borne virus with most people today becoming infected by sharing needles or other equipment to inject drugs. For some, the illness is short-term, but for 70 to 85 percent of others who become infected, it becomes a long-term chronic infection. Long-term health problems are common and death. And the majority of infected might not be aware of their infection because they are not clinically ill, which comes back to a treatment model for all, and not just those with advanced cases of hep C. Up until now, the state paid for each prescription individually, 
So Nickens says the only cases that could qualify were those that were the worst of the worst. Your work is to treat and heal people, so you must have felt like you were doing your job with your hands tied behind your back previously. I can think of one woman right off the top of my head that I have personally done three prior authorizations on, plus tried to get drug assistance program from the uh, pharmaceutical company, and she has always been denied. Damage to the liver is classified on a scale of F0 to F4. F0, no damage whatsoever. F4, cirrhosis of the liver. In the past, we could only treat F3s, F4s, so that's very severe liver damage. Just this past year, they let us start treating F2s. But still, if they were an F1 or an F0, they could not be treated. Governor John Bell Edwards and Health Secretary Dr. Rebecca Gee announced last week the state would use what's called a Netflix model of payment. Louisiana will now pay essentially a subscription fee to a drug company and for that get unlimited access to the drug, similar to how we pay a monthly fee to stream unlimited television shows and movies. There's also been an influx of new meds in recent years to treat the disease. The medications that they have now are absolutely wonderful. What we had in the past had multiple, multiple horrible side effects. Uh, it was a combination of shots and pills and just really made a person feel bad. Um, now the pills we have now, most of the time it's one pill once a day for 12 weeks and that's it. Before the treatment was six months to a year. So it's simplified and it works? It works. Whereas in the past it wasn't always certain? No, no. In the past we only had a 50 to 60 percent chance of cure. Now the chances of cure are anywhere from 95 to 98, 100 percent chance of cure, if taken correctly. What was the reaction from patients uh, when they heard this news? Everybody wants to be seen now so they can <laughs> get on the medication now. And the plan is to treat as many people as possible, everybody if possible, and wipe out this thing. Correct. Is that uh, a realistic goal? Well, it's a good goal. Um, there are going to be people who do not take the medication correctly. If you do not take the medication correctly, you can become resistant to the medication, and then you need more and more and more. This is what happened with HIV. Uh, we treated everybody at first and the medications were not that good, people weren't taking them correctly, they developed resistance. Now we have better and better medications, just like we do with hepatitis C. So yes, if we could get everybody tested, everybody treated, everybody take the treatment correctly, yes, you could wipe out hepatitis C within a generation or two. That infusion of hope Real hope isn't something the vast majority of hep C patients around here could have even dreamed of. But now, suddenly, it's within reach. And it's happening at a medical facility, Open Health, that began 20 years ago as an outreach for those living with HIV. When the Baton Rouge General moved from this area of the capital city to its present location and Earl K. Long Hospital closed, it left a vacuum and open health care seems determined to fill that void. Leah Andrews, Director of Clinical Services, told us how it's happening. We are a federally qualified health center, and what that means is that we serve um, this community, an underserved community. Um, we provide a uh, variety of, of specialty services. Um, we do primary care for adult and pediatrics here. Um, so that means anybody who lives, works, and plays in this area um, can come here for care. So aside from primary care, we have a few specialties. We have endocrinology, we have podiatry, we have some infectious diseases, we treat people living with HIV as well as hepatitis C, we have a dental clinic, and we have behavioral health services here at our FQHC. That sounds very full service. Yes, yes. Yeah. Our, so. our tagline is whole care for the whole community. So we try and we have a wraparound service model where we try and meet everyone's needs, you know, in one fell swoop. Now the state was able to treat just a thousand patients with Hep C last year, but expects to treat at least 31 of 39,000 over the next several years with this new plan.
And everyone, that is our show for this week. Remember, you can watch us and anything LPB anytime, wherever you are, with our brand new app. Download it for free from the App Store. This updated version features news, public affairs, documentaries, and how-tos, and many more programs. And please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We close tonight with some images of this 4th of July holiday weekend about our American right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That phrase gives examples from the Declaration of Independence of inalienable rights. Our most famous document says the creator gives those rights to all people which governments were created to protect. Photographer Rex Q. Fortenberry takes us to Washington in this edition of Louisiana Postcards. Good night, everyone. Support comes from... Entergy provides much more than power. We support science and engineering at local schools to build a brighter path to better jobs and help prepare the next generation. Because together, we power life. Entergy. Additional support provided by the Fred B. and Ruth B. Ziegler Foundation and the Ziegler Art Museum located in Jennings City Hall. The museum focuses on emerging Louisiana artists and is an historical and cultural center for Southwest Louisiana. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting with support from viewers like you.